Tori Eisman, Benchmark Real Estate Group. We're with Brad Siebert from The Mortgage Firm. And Brad, I want to talk a little bit about when people relocate or change jobs. You know, back in the day, it was very challenging to get a loan. And mm -hmm. I think that's changed. Can you talk a little bit about what does somebody need to know if they're relocating from another state to Central Florida? Yeah. So back a few, about a year or so ago, the government made a much more stringent on being able to prove income. And what was happening is somebody that was living in, in Illinois said, I don't, I don't want to live up here in the cold anymore. Let's move <laughs> down to Florida. So they, they get a job. Let's say it started in, in August. Well, because of school reasons, they wanted to move here in July, but the job wasn't going to start until August 1st. So the old way said, wait a second, we can't include the new income until you start the job and maybe be on the job for as much as 30 days before we can use that income. Now with us, we've gone to the, to the idea of we're going to allow you to close on the loan as long as it's not prior or more than 60 days prior to the start date. So let's just say you were starting August 1st, two months prior to that, we could, we, we could approve your loan and close on your loan June 1st, because that would be 60 days. And we would use the income that you're going to get on the new job, not the income of your old job. But not everybody can still do that. I know you guys self underwrite, you're a little bit different. Yeah, that is not something that's done, you know, lender wide or industry wide. Every lender has their own unique conditions as far as how they look at income. Um, we look at it as, you know, you're going through the expense of moving, right. okay? <laughs> we have a firm offer letter from your new employer that says, you know, you've passed the background checks, you've done everything that would stop you from being hired. The only thing is, is time now. And on, let's just use October, August 1st, that day, you're going to, employment's going to start. So we, we have to have the, the diligence or the burden of proof to show that your income is likely to continue. So we feel that that meets the criteria of, you know, their income's going to continue subject to this date starting. So the 60 days was something that we thought was a way to allow people to change jobs and buy a house without starting a new job and still meet the criteria that's set upon us by the government. So when you say change jobs, do they have to be in the exact same industry? No, no. And again, we, we, we are unique to a lot of other lenders where they will require, you know, if you're a mechanic, you got to stay in the mechanic field. What we want to see is no gap of employment, meaning you're not taking three months off just to do whatever. <laughs> okay. And we look at the salary. Okay. So, if your current job has a salary of 40,000 and this new job is gonna have a salary of 60,000 and let's say you were a mechanic and the new job you're gonna be a chef. Well, if you were lending your money and somebody came to you and said, hey, you, you were gonna to agree to let me borrow X amount of dollars, but I got a new job that's paying $20,000 more. Why would you wanna prevent them from making more money? Right. And that's the mindset that we use is as long as we can verify that the income stable, which means you're going from salary to salary, then we're okay with that. Now, if you went from 100% salary to full commission, that's when we're going to have to, to, to relook at this. That. But going from an hourly to an hourly or salaried or salary or even you can be salary and then go hourly, it, we're okay with that because the, um, the letter from your new employer is going to say you're going to be full time and your estimated work is 40 hours a week. So, so it's about again, having a job equal to or better than what you already had, or even if it's, it's not, not even, better than, it's, but you have sufficient income. Well, for the reason, right. So let's just say, you know, for quality of life, you know, this, I'm in a high stress job. I don't need to make a hundred thousand dollars, but I've taken a full-time job making $50,000 and that $50,000 is sufficient to support the debt to income ratio. We're okay with that because we know the salary is not going to continue to decline. Right. Okay, yeah, there was a decline in income, but what's the reason? Quality of life. It's kind of like downsizing. Right. You know what? I don't need this high stress. Right. Okay. I'm in a position where I, I can make less money and maintain the quality of life. So I'm going to, you know, decrease my stress level, take a job that, you know, has an improvement in life and, and go on. As long as we know it's not because of performance, like you got demoted or you lost a job, but 
you know, once a salary set, that's usually set that way as well. Okay, great. So if somebody wants to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to contact? They can either call me direct at 407-353-3750, or they can go on my website at wearenotthebanks.com. And if you know anybody relocating, feel free to share this video with them and give Brad a call.